Our lead story, well, India ushered in its 75th Republic Day with a grand display of its women power and military might that included elite marching contingents, missiles, warplanes, surveillance gadgets and lethal weapon systems. Of course, the highlight was French President Emmanuel Macron as the chief guest of the Republic Day Parade. But Nari Shakti was truly front and centre and all women tri-service contingent also marched down the Kartavya path. And in another first, the parade was led by over 100 women artists playing Indian musical instruments as opposed to traditional military bands kick-starting the celebrations. Many states also presented their diverse tableaus. And as the contingents marched down the Kartavya path, the country was reminded of the values of democracy, secularism and socialism enshrined in our constitution. Take a look at this report. His friend. The President of France, Emmanuel Macron, being greeted by President Murbu and the Prime Minister moments before the start of this year's Republic Day Parade. A short while later, a 95-strong French contingent and a 33-member band contingent marched past the dais with the French Air Force's Rafales flying overhead. The symbolism would not be lost on anyone. Just a few months back, Indian soldiers marched down the Champs-Élysées in Paris on Bastille Day in France in honor of Indian soldiers who laid down their lives during the First World War. Nari Shakti was a big focus this time around on our Republic Day with over a hundred women artists playing Indian musical instruments. We have an old women contingent from the Tri-Services led by Captain Sandhya of the military police. There was also an all women Tri-Service contingent which marched down Kartavya Path and also all women marching contingents from the BSF, CISF, CRPF, ITBP and the Delhi Police. In addition to the marching contingents of the forces, there was a big focus on states with colourful tableau representing various states across the country. And finally, the grand finale, women daredevils on motorcycles and then formation the Grand Indian Air Force fly past. But moving now to the big diplomatic visit of President Macron. Well, the larger diplomatic significance, it's huge. India and France have really emerged as strong allies. They're closer than ever before now. The Modi-Macron bonhomie was on display and several traditions were revived and added for Macron's special visit. But on the sidelines, key agreements, key pacts were signed in a visit that is being described as one defined by both symbolism and substance. Kadam Mini Sharma has more details. Foreign Secretary Vinay Quatra gave details about the uh, talks between Prime Minister Modi and President Macron uh, on his state visit uh, here in Delhi. Uh, President Macron was accompanied by at least 40 members in his delegation. Three of them were ministers, the defense minister, the foreign minister, as well as the culture minister. Now, uh, uh, he, while he did not give any uh, specific details about any uh, specific deals, he did say that uh, the two countries have adopted defensive production roadmap. Now, what does this roadmap mean? It means that the defense industrial sector will prioritize co-designing, co-development and co-production. Now this will help uh, uh, the supply chains of uh, not only France but also India and also those countries who actually uh, use the similar products. So this is one important development. Apart from that there is a uh, there is an agreement on defense space uh, partnership and uh, MOU between New Space India Limited and Ariane Space uh, with regard to satellite launches. Now India has been uh, launching several satellites. Now this also is in defense sphere, this is also quite important. Uh, apart from this, there is uh, the two leaders also talked about the developments in the Red Sea. This is one area which has been a worry for a, uh, for some time now. And they talked about the Red Sea, the disruptions which have been happening there, the potential disruption uh, and the actual things which are happening there. And it is the maritime domain there. So it is causing disruption in commercial shipping and it's a matter of serious concern. So it was also uh, discussed between the two leaders. And well, moving now to the big political headline, the political earthquake in Bihar, a political churn and a political realignment now almost inevitable in Bihar. Parallel parlays from Patna to Delhi. In fact, on Saturday, key meetings lined up. The RJD is, of course, going to be in, an, in a huddle. The JDU has also called a legislative council meet at the chief minister's residence. And the BJP has also summoned all its MLAs and MLCs for a key huddle tomorrow. Government formation is likely 
soon and well what we are learning is that there are going to be two BJP, chief, two BJP deputy chief ministers and Nitish Kumar will continue as the chief minister. This of course has wide ranging ramifications for the India blog. Listen in to all the political reactions coming in. Well, Tejashvi Yadav, the Deputy Chief Minister of Bihar, has just concluded a meeting at his residence here in Patna. And this meeting was perhaps a strategizing meeting to see how the RGD can retain its power which it currently shares with the JDU with Nitish Kumar choosing to walk away switch sides and walk into the NDA fold once again this is not new in Bihar politics this has happened in the past but this time again the Bihar churning seems to be happening and this is something that the RJD now would look at to see how it can perhaps get that majority number because Without the JDU MLAs, that seems impossible on its own. And the interesting thing that uh, we've been also reporting is look at the numbers in Bihar. And if you see the numbers in Bihar, it is not the JDU which holds the chief ministership that has the highest number. In fact, they're at number three. But number two and number one are propping up number three to the chief minister's post. Now, will the BJP also play the same game? Will the BJP also agree to Nitish Kumar being Chief Minister? Well, the report suggests the deal seems to be done. But again, there's many a slip between the cup and the lip when it comes to politics. But Bihar is churning once again. It's cold, it's winter, but the politics definitely is heating up in the state of Bihar with Nitish Kumar set to make a political switch once again. An emergency or whatever meeting you call it at Tejashvi Yadav's residence has ended. The RGD also strategizing to counter the fallout of Nitish Kumar's political switch, which is not the first time he's done it. He's now beginning to be known for it. But obviously for the RGD, the principal idea would be to see if they can cling on to power. And that seems impossible at this point. And that surely would have been a matter of discussion at this meeting at Tejasvi Yadav's residence here in Patna, where we've been reporting from. So, well, the power play there in Patna, but uh, the impact being felt in Delhi as well. The BJP Bihar president was summoned uh, on Friday, uh, on Thursday, I beg your pardon, uh, to Delhi. And uh, these are visuals uh, from Friday of a key BJP huddle here in Delhi. The BJP, of course, keeping a close eye on uh, the situation in Bihar. The BJP high command very closely watching. These are visuals of BJP national president JP Nadda leaving after a key BJP meet. Uh, all the MLAs and MLCs have been summoned on Saturday in Patna. And the most extensive coverage of this big political crisis in Bihar only on NDTV. Just as the collapse of the India bloc now looks imminent, with its principal pivot Nitish Kumar all set to walk away to the NDA side, NDTV reports from ground zero of this political quake to hit the opposition bloc much before it could get to the brass traps. NDTV reports from the ground in Patna. And well, in other news, the Supreme Court has convened a special sitting on Saturday, very rare. Uh, this after it took uh, so moto cognizance of the Calcutta uh, High Court issue. The Calcutta High Court, remember, had overturned or in a sense ignored an order by a division bench uh, ordering a CBI probe into alleged irregularities in medical admissions and admissions to medical colleges. And uh, in fact, uh, a judge in the Calcutta High Court had also accused a judge in the division bench of political interference or political links. But the Supreme Court has now taken uh, suo moto cognizance and a special sitting will be held on Saturday, an extremely rare case. And with that, we'll take a short break, but news continues on the other side. Let's get you our special report. Well, the Haryana Real Estate Regulation Authority has put out a notice reiterating its earlier act on the 10% advance payment to promoters. But how is it really playing out on the ground? Surya Goswami has this report. The Haryana Real Estate Regulation Authority 
bats for home buyers. Through a notification, the authority has reiterated this particular clause from its 2016 Act. The notification states that no promoter shall accept more than 10% of the cost of the apartment, plot or building as an advance payment or application fee. Quoting RERA Act 2016, it says, without a written agreement for sale and registration of the said agreement, no payment must be made. While builders view this notice as just a reminder, buyers call it a welcome move. But question the implementation. Transparency is better for buyer and for developer. There is more transparency in it. And this was the first act that you can't pay more than 10% from the developer charge until that document is registered. What is the punishment for the builder? I made a clause for home buyers. Keeping home buyers in your mind, where is the implementation of the home buyers? Speaking to NDTV, Vera Chairman Arun Kumar said, that the notice was issued as a warning to builders who are not following the act. We want people to be aware of the rules so that they are not duped. We want to ensure that there is transparency between buyers and builders. While the Haryana RERA hopes the notice keeps builders on their toes, buyers say the real struggle still is getting possession on time. This project, particular project we are talking about is Grenopolis in sector 89 Gurgaon. It was supposed to be delivered in 2015. The builder has stopped all the construction as on today's date. He has uh, eaten the 52 crore escrow account amount. We have purchased this project on 2018 and, to, and the position date was August 2022. But today you can see we are in 2024 and there is no result. Rera, the project launched, no project is not Rera tightening the regulation for promoters has not convinced buyers that this will solve the problem and build bridges between the builders and buyers in Gurugram. They have a slew of issues to raise and they say that this one stepping stone is not it. But can gradual regulation lead to a solution? That is yet to be seen. This is Sri Rupa Goswami for NDTV.